Hey everybody, welcome back to GTech, and today I'm going to be building a roughly $1,300 gaming PC for a buddy of mine, and his current system is actually this. Let me show you. Ugh, there we go. Okay, so this is his current system, and despite it being a little bit dusty, don't worry about that. That just means that it's very well loved. His system is currently running a Core i5-6500 on an H110 motherboard. He's only got a single stick of eight gigabytes of memory, so it's running in single channel mode. Uh, he's got a GTX 1060 six gigabyte. Now the 1060 six gig is still a pretty good card, but now that it's about four years after the 1060 has been out, he's looking for something with a little bit more power. I know he wants to play games like Call of Duty Cold War, uh, basically anything modern really. But instead of just upgrading, Ugh, one or two components out of his system. We're basically revamping the whole thing. It's gonna be a major glow up compared to what he's got right now. So the CPU right here is the AMD Ryzen 7 3700X. That is an eight core 16 thread processor on the Zen 2 architecture. It's gonna be slotted into the MSI MAG B550 Tomahawk motherboard, and that's gonna give him Ryzen 3000 series support right out of the box. And the same goes for Ryzen 5000 series support. We're also upgrading him from a measly one stick of RAM to two. We're doubling his capacity and his speed, so he's going to get two sticks of eight gigabytes running at 3600 megahertz. That's about the sweet spot for Ryzen nowadays. For storage, I'm not only going to be transferring his one terabyte Western Digital Blue hard drive from his old PC into this one, but I'm also going to be equipping him with one terabyte of super fast NVMe SSD storage. This is an inland premium SSD, so he's gonna see a big improvement over his 7200 RPM hard drive. And also attaching to the motherboard is going to be this, the MSI Mag Core Liquid 240R. I've never actually worked with an MSI liquid cooler before, but you know, they just started getting into the business of making liquid coolers, and I figured, oh hey, that'll actually match his motherboard quite perfectly. Powering the system is gonna be this EVGA 750 watt bronze rated power supply, and all these components are gonna be slotting into the Lee and Lee Land Cool 2. Now this is a very highly regarded case, especially for the money. It's got great airflow, it's got three included fans, RGB on the front, it's got tempered glass, basically everything that you could possibly want from a 2020 case. But there's one thing left on this table that I haven't mentioned. This is the brand new Gigabyte RTX 3060 Ti. Yes, this is an Ampere graphics card. He's got one and that's absolutely phenomenal. This is gonna ensure that he's getting super fast frame rates in basically every single game that he could play. And this is going to be a massive, massive jump up from his six gigabyte GTX 1060. But now that I've explained just about every single thing sitting on my table here, let's actually get started building it. And there we go, yet another build in the bag. I honestly really, really like how this one turned out. I think it looks really sharp, actually. Now, unfortunately, I'm not gonna have any benchmarks to show you how this system runs, because I gotta get this system back to him basically tomorrow, but I can guarantee it's gonna play basically everything that he's gonna want. But first things first, let's actually talk about a few of the components that I used and kinda what I thought about them as I was going about the build process. So the graphics card felt really light to me for whatever reason. And I think that's because the shroud is actually made of plastic. 
as opposed to something like aluminum. But I guess that's okay, because most of the aftermarket graphics cards from NVIDIA for the 30 series are way larger than two slots. And being that this is a 3060 Ti, meaning it's a little bit less powerful, it doesn't need a massive cooler. And speaking of thermals, let's talk about this liquid cooler, the MSI Core Liquid 240R. Now, the first thing that I noticed is that the pump isn't actually located in the CPU block. It's stuck about right in the middle of the radiator fins. And what this allows me to do is actually rotate that little MSI Dragon emblem on the CPU block itself. So no matter what way that your tubes are facing, or if you're using an inverted motherboard layout, you can always keep the Dragon emblem facing straight up. Not only that, but the CPU block and both fans use three pin RGB connectors that can all be daisy chained together. So what I actually did was daisy chain them into the RGB on the front panel of the case. I actually really enjoyed working with this case. I haven't worked with it ever before, but I've heard plenty of good things about it, how it's got great airflow, it's got plenty of included fans for the price. Now, one of the really cool features that I got to work with when using this case was the removable front fan bracket. Now, you can reposition this in an upper spot, you can flip it backwards. It all depends on if you want to put radiators in the front or if you want to keep your fans more towards the front of the case or if you want to keep them back a little bit for more airflow. If you want to do push-pull, you can do that as well. So that's just about going to bring us to the conclusion of this build. So if you like this video, you know what to do. And if you want to see more stuff like this, make sure to get subbed down below because I love making this stuff for you guys. And as always, have a good one. Honey, I'm a big